Hey guys, Matthew here. So today, we'll be going over another episode of BTV series. This is going to be about basically Xanomods. So I want to go over the Xanomods, how to basically combo them with other things in the game, uh, such as Sextant Mods, for example, uh, to really try to get the most out of every single map that you run. Obviously, this is going to change uh, from a league to league basis because the Xanomods, uh, Xanomods do change and rotate. Uh, but I can only talk about these ones that we have access to right now and uh, you know ways to actually try to make currency out of those and how I personally would go about running my maps when it comes to Zana. I'll, uh, when it comes to my Zana mods. Also, I'll be sure to talk about basically early league uh, versus you know as you progress into the league to the end game. I want to I want to make this an actual pretty short video though, so let's get right into it. So first off, obviously you have you're gonna have your main uh, beginner mod, which is just gonna be increased flat quantity of item founds in this area. Uh, this applies to maps, as you can see, which is really nice. And you know this number, this eight percent goes starts at like one percent or so, and then it just goes higher and higher as you progress through the Zana quest line. Fortune favors the brave. Basically, uh, this gives you any of the other, any, basically, any map mod uh, that you have or that you have not yet unlocked. Uh, I personally would not use this like ever, because uh, you're kind of gambling three chaos away just on something that might just be completely useless or that might be good. But the way I see sextants and how I try to use my sextants, or sorry. Xanomods is basically in correlation to my sextant to really try to uh, have two things that go well together and uh, try to target farm as much as possible. Alternate of the same tier, this is okay, uh, especially super early in the league, uh, to try to, you know, fill up your atlas. But the thing is, it's, it's kind of a gamble again because, you know, you might just run... You might just run the Xanomod and actually re-roll your map into another map that you already have. Uh, so honestly, I just recommend going on something like PoE Tra or PoE Map Live, or um, you know, having some friends that can share completion with you early in the league. Uh, so you don't really have to use this here. Shaped of T1 to 5 basically gives uh, you take a map of T1 to T5. And it's gonna open a map of you know five tiers higher, uh, without you needing to actually get the uh, the proper shaper or This is pretty interesting. Uh, it's not good though. Uh, honestly, it's pretty pretty useless, completely useless. Uh, but it becomes interesting because of the next one. The next one is shaped of the tier one to ten. This one gets really really good. The reason this is really good is because it requires a map of T10 or below. And it's going to open a map that is five tiers higher, but with random modifiers and a chance to be corrupted. So with random modifiers, it means that it can roll things like Elemental Reflect, Physical Reflect, uh, No Region, whatever, whatever. So all those mods, um, you know, you want to have a build that can uh, basically do every single map modifier without any care in the world if you want to take advantage of this Xanomod. But this is really really strong and the reason for this is pretty simple uh, at this point in the league it wouldn't be good anymore but this is basically uh, one that is extremely extremely strong early in the league when it comes to trying to build your map pool and just making a profit out of off of selling maps because honestly when it comes to the first few days of a league uh, maps are by far the most profitable thing uh, you can you can get like by far so Shaped T1 to T10. How you take advantage of this is basically by using a T10 maps. Uh, you want to use chisels because it will apply. And then simply, you know, alk your, alk your map. You don't want to re-roll your map into something really good or anything. Because as, as it says, it's going to re-roll that map with random modifiers. Uh, but the chisels will apply the quantity, the 20% quantity. So you do want to do that. But otherwise, you just throw an alk on it. And uh, you don't need to valid or anything like that. Just chisel, alk, and go with this. So the reason why this is so strong is because it costs 6 chaos. So it's going to turn your T10 map into a T15 
for six chaos. Now this doesn't sound very good right now, as I said, because we're at the point in the league where maps are dirt cheap, uh, except for you know meta T16 Elder maps. But everything else is super cheap, so it's not that great. But when it comes to very very early in the league, what you'll want to do is basically f choose a map that is very very good and has a lot of density. Uh, that is a T10 map that can turn into a T15. So. And this current version of the Atlas, Moon Temple, was like the best by far. So the reason why is because Moon Temple has a crazy amount of density. Uh, it's got a lot, a lot of monsters in there. And uh, the layout is not the best in the world. Uh, the boss doesn't have any phases or anything, so the boss is a good kill as well. Um, but there's also other options. Uh, there's not just Moon Temple. Something like Haunted Mansion is a good one. Uh, Underground Sea is a good, a good one as well. All these maps with a lot of density that are not too crazy long to clear uh, are basically good contenders. So the reason why that's super strong, again, is because it costs 6 chaos. And this early into the league, I'm talking like the first week or so, uh, at this point, a T12 you know, map or so, uh, if I go into my map tab, a T12 map is only like 2 chaos at best probably, right? Uh, maybe 2.5 or so when it comes to bulk selling them. Uh, but nobody's really going to buy them in bulk for the most part. Some people will, but for the most part you're not going to sell hundreds and hundreds every single day uh, for a couple chaos. But at the very beginning of the league, like I said, around the first week or so, a single T12 map or T13 map would pay back for your Xanamod, for your chisels, and for your map back. Because you're running a T10, which is going to be like 2C, the, the map mod is like 6C, you're talking about 8 chaos, 4 chisels is 1 chaos at that point. Uh, and then a single map of like T12, T13 is like 10C plus, or, or 9 to 10C, but exalts are like 60C. So you can literally just print maps from doing this and print currency. You can also basically be heavily uh, working toward a better map pool. And every time you get a lucky T16 drop, because this is, will turn your T10 into a T15, which means if you have T16s unlocked on your Atlas, such as your garden maps, they will drop and they do have a possibility of dropping, uh, which will then turn your... Uh, you know your 60 uh, you know investment into way 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 more so the best way to go about this is to simply basically uh, let's say moon temple was a t10 so what you do early early in the league is uh, you would start in this corner of the atlas and just clear up to moon temple and then you go from moon temple and start completing your way towards the uh, uh, the center of the atlas and the guardians or maybe one specific Guardians, which just happens to be more expensive than the other, or whatever your strategy may be. But then you don't want to get, uh, you don't want to complete any of the other maps of tier 10 uh, on your Atlas, because you don't want them to drop. Because every time they drop, it's basically going to make it harder for you to sustain that uh, Moon Temple uh, mod over here uh, on the shaped T1 to 10. Then you have the Elder tier. This is okay, but the thing is 15 chaos is a pretty hefty investment. Um, and since it rerolls your maps with a random with random modifiers, you do have a chance of getting completely cucked and getting maps that are like 50, 60 quantity. Uh, and then when that happens, chances are you might not even get a map return. And at that point you're basically just, you know, bleeding currency. So that's not good. Uh, Warbands. So Warbands is one of the very, very, very strong ones. Uh, that people don't really know about. So the reason why Warbands is super strong is basically it gives you three additional Warbands on, war on your map and every Warband is like three or four, I think. Yeah, four uh, unique enemies. The reason why Warbands is super good and the reason why those four unique uh, enemies per Warband packs, which means 12 uniques uh, on your map, is extremely good is that they allow you to instantly... Uh, proc the most possible uh, ghosted enemies in your map without needing to do any like 
min-maxing or wasting time trying to put some ghosts in your rares or whatever. Um, if you're not too sure what I'm talking about, basically there is this sextant mod, because this is one that you would pair with a sextant mod, and the sextant mod is basically um, the first 10 possessed monsters drop an additional X scarab. So it can be polished, gilded, or uh, uh, rusted. Basically, this is going to depend on the map tier. Or, sorry, the map color. So white maps will drop rusted, yellow maps will drop polished, and red maps will drop gilded. So when you roll that sextant, and I heavily, heavily... Um, recommend using stack sextants on your maps very very early at least when you get into your uh, long-term strategy not as you're progressing through the atlas because you're moving around all the time uh, but when you when you set up on your map that you're going to want to farm for for longer term heavily recommend using um, uh, sextants so when you're going to roll this mod the first 10 possessed monsters drop an additional scarab uh, you're going to want to roll warbands and then get, get yourself a possessed foe uh, prophecy. Uh, possessed foe. The reason why you do this is because the possessed foe uh, prophecy gives you, you will encounter one or more very powerful monsters possessed by a tormented spirit. So, what this prophecy does, it's a lot more than just you will encounter one or more very powerful monsters. Uh, possessed by a tremendous spirit. Essentially, it means that every single unique monster in your map will be possessed by a tremendous spirit. So if you've been following, Warband gives you 12 uniques, uh, 12 additional unique monsters to your maps. Plus, obviously, there's also, also your map boss that is obviously going to be one unique as well. The Possessed Foe makes sure that all of these, every single unique on your map is basically ghosted. And, alongside the Sextant mod, the first 10 possessed monsters that you will kill will drop, 100% guaranteed, a Scarab. Obviously, not every single Scarab is uh, in crazy high demand. Some of them are super cheap. But if you're running these maps and, and doing this Warbands uh, Possessed Foe strategy thing, uh, you're going to end up with a lot of the really good Scarabs. So, for example, Sulfite Scarabs, Bessieri Scarabs, Cartographers, um... Uh, divination scarabs all those really good ones that may not seem like they sell for a whole lot when you go look up on poe trade or whatever and you're like oh this is only three chaos the thing is if you sell them in bulk you can sell them for like four to five times the the price of singles uh because the demand is super super high and people don't want to be you know buying them one at a time and uh, i'm a prime example of that when i uh when i stock up on bestiary scarabs the price is like 2 to 3 C on Pewee Ninja, but I'm paying 12 to 15 C per because I want to buy them 50 at a time. Uh, so this is a very, very strong, um, you know, Xanamod when you pair it up with the, prof the, the, the Prophecy and the Sextant Modifier. It's, it's, it has to all go in together. The thing is, when you get that Sextant Modifier, obviously it's going to last for 3 maps. The prophecy itself, possessed foe, is not gonna proc every single map that you uh, that you use it on, but chances are every time you roll the sextant in three maps, it's gonna proc at least once, uh, and that 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 will easily pay for all those maps and all those animods, you know, the two C each and the possessed foe prophecies and everything else. And if you're lucky enough to get two procs on a single sextant, uh, on a single time you run this, you roll the sextant then you're looking at some pretty big money. Now, Abyss is another very good one. The reason Abyss is super strong is because Abyss gives you hundreds more monsters per map. So even in the worst map density possible, Abyss will add a ton of monster to the map, and, you know, every single monster has a chance of dropping, you know, currency, maps, uh, yeah, good uniques, I, I, literally everything, obviously. At the moment you're adding monsters to your map, you're doing a good thing. You're, you're doing yourself a favor, especially when it comes to map returns and sustaining maps. Um, so Abyss is very, very powerful, especially super earlier on. Uh, the reason is the map mod, the Xana mod, is, is two chaos only. Yet, when it comes to actually the uh, 
the bases, the jewels, if you hit something like a searching eye of item level like 78 or plus, uh, that's like the minimum, or like 82 or something, if you want to go for, for higher tier maps, mapping strategy, uh, those alone will basically pay for three to four of these, uh, of, of these Xana mods alone, basically, because the base will sell for like 6 to 8 C, and, and I'm not even exaggerating either. Obviously, the lesser bases, such as ghastly ones or uh, the uh, the murder size, will not sell for as much, but they will still sell and almost cover the price of the Xanamod by itself every time. And obviously, you get the the chest at the end. You also get the chance of a lich to get the you know those juicy two socket tomb fist, two socket bubonics, and, and all of that juicy stuff. Ambush, ambush it gives you three additional strong boxes. It's not like the best mod in the game. But it does pair very well with Monster's Treasure. So, Monster's Treasure is a prophecy, just like the Possessed Foe. And what it does is that you'll you'll travel to a map where the monsters lie in wait, open the boxes they guard, and slay them all. So, what it does is basically, it takes every single monster in your map, and it puts them in strong boxes. And this actually pairs super, super well um, with a sextant modifier, if I can find it, sextant modifier, that basically adds a huge amount of uh, quantity to strongbox monsters. Uh, as you can see, this one here, strongbox and areas are corrupted area contains an extra strong box so this is a good one to pair with monsters treasure and once you do that you can pair that with ambush as well because that's going to give you three additional strong boxes and since the strong boxes in the area are corrupted you actually don't need to roll them which can be an advantage to some extent because all the every time they're corrupted they have a higher chance of you know dropping uh, six links and we all know how how profitable six 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 links are early in the league especially with the proper colors uh with just you know a little bit of life and some res uh you're looking at at the very least one exalt because no matter what's on there it's still better than a tabula so long as it has meta colors on it uh but the really juicy mod is strongbox monsters have 500 percent increased item quantity uh, and then strongbox monsters are enraged area contains an extra strongbox so here you're looking at one strongbox uh, plus three for ambush and I believe monsters treasure gives you 30 or something so you're looking at over 30 strong boxes in your map every single monster in the map is put inside a strong box and strong box monsters have 500% increase item quantity which if you do the math on this that basically means you're getting five times the loot from one map than you would be uh, if you were running you know a, a regular map which is absolutely insane, especially when it comes to map sustain. Uh, so there's been strategies in the past where people would just roll a monster's treasure and just keep rolling sextants until they got this on, on things like Elder Underground Seas because the density is crazy in there. And then they would just come out of every single map with like 30 to 40 red maps uh, that alone would sell for multiple exalts. Uh, so... Definitely a very, very strong mod ambush when paired with Monster Shedder and that sextant modifier. That being said, this is a pretty damn rare sextant modifier. But as you can see, it's uh, level 1, which means it can roll on white maps, yellow maps, red maps, whatever. It's just pretty rare uh, to roll. But when you roll it, you really want to juice this one out because it is an insane one. This one, not quite as good. Can only run on, can only roll on yellow maps. Uh, but still very good, especially later in a league uh, when Divine Orbs start to be very expensive because Divine Orbs are not that expensive early. But like I said, again, uh, regular six links can sell for a lot uh, early in a league because they're always just going to be better than a Tabula anyways. Uh, Bloodlines, not a whole lot to say here. Uh, Nemesis, Nemesis is a very good one, again, uh, especially paired with one of the Sextant modifiers. Um, Nemesis monsters drop three additional currency items. So the reason why this is super good is basically you're going to want to roll this sextant modifier which costs four chaos because it's going to give you five packs of rare monsters 
and all the rare monsters are going to have Nemesis mod, uh, you'll definitely want to juice out your maps as much as possible to get as many rare monsters as possible. Um, and then probably roll maps with like Beyond because th th that will give you a ton of, uh, of rare monsters as well. And every single monster will drop three additional currency items. Uh, so f f it's it's pretty fair to assume that once in a while these three additional currency items will be an exalt here and there, so a bunch of chaos, some sextants. Who knows? You might hit the jackpot and get a mirror. Uh, this is definitely one of the very good sextant modifiers when it comes to to, to making currency when paired with uh, the the, ne the nemesis uh, Zana mod. Uh, Breach, yeah, not so much. I mean, Breach used to be extremely good when it came, when it came to doctor farming, uh, but they severely nerfed Breaches. They did rebuff them this league, um, or maybe it was last league, I can't exactly remember. Uh, but still, they're not in the greatest spot. Technically, uh, when I was doing Burial Chamber grinding, um, I would just outright skip them. Because most of the time they're going to be in bad spots anyways. But if they're in a very clear open map and uh, you, you feel like doing them, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. And chances are you're not going to lose money from doing them uh, because the time invested versus the rewards isn't all that bad. It's just not like the greatest thing in the world. But the ones in good spots and good locations, big open world, very nice to do. And finally, we have Harbinger. So Harbinger is basically the same thing as Nemesis. You have a sex modifier for Harbinger. Um, that gives you... Har Harbingers drop additional currency shards. Unique bosses are accompanied by Mysterious Harbinger. Uh, so once again, level 73, which means it can only roll in yellow maps and above. And unique bosses drop additional currency shards. Uh, so the best way to you know juice up this modifier with the Harbinger over here is that this mod will already give you two more Harbingers. Then the unique bosses are accompanied by Mr. Uh, Mysterious Harbinger here, so that's nice. That means, at the very least, you'll be getting one more Mysterious Harbinger. Um, and then the unique bosses drop additional currency shards is also very nice as well. And uh, what you can do is pair this, this, um, this Harbinger here with this prophecy called uh, Deadly Twins, I believe is what it's called. Which basically double the bosses in your map. Um, it, it's, it's pretty nice, basically. It's going to double the, the bosses in your map. So if you're going for a, a, a map that has like three bosses, those three bosses are going to become six bosses. Uh, and if you go back to the sextant modifier for Harbinger... Uh, unique bosses are accompanied by Mysterious Harbinger, so you'd be looking at, you know, way, like, a ton of Mysterious Harbingers. Uh, and every one of those Harbingers drop, you know, currency shards, which, lo and behold, can, you know, uh, mean that you'll drop a mirror shard if you're lucky. You'll also be getting a ton of Exalted shards, Annulment shards, Ancient, uh, ancient Orb sh uh, shards, and all the other good ones as well, and obviously a lot of the lesser ones as well. Uh, but for a four chaos investment, when properly rolled on a on a nice map with multiple bosses, uh, you can be looking at some pretty serious currency gains. So, that's mostly going to be it for the video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Hopefully, you learned a little something. Uh, before I leave, as always, I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons, Alex, the other Alex, uh, Fixed Faxer, got it right this time. Francesco, Val, Jose, Vengeance, Corey, and Empty. You guys are the best. I really love you guys, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.